One of the most recent studies to come out about herd immunity is from the La Jolla Institute for Immunology, which a Minnesota researcher, medical consultant, talked about in a video that he put out this week supporting his thoughts on herd immunity. My proposal is that everybody who has these high-risk medical conditions, we give them N95 masks. We put them out there. And everybody else should have the freedom to choose whether they want to wear a mask or not. In fact, they should be encouraged not to wear a mask to increase the herd immunity. Even before I did my PhD in Boston, I was a, virus, I was a viral researcher. I used to study viruses for a couple of years. And herd immunity is a pretty normal thing in virus, you know, in virology. And they just came out with a study. It's actually pre-press where they're specifically looking at herd immunity with COVID-19. So I've been patient, I've been waiting, I'm curious, right? There's, there's good evidence that we would have herd immunity based on previous SARS coronaviruses. In fact, they've even seen it up to 17 years uh, with previous SARS. And again, so it's kind of expected, but I waited for the study. We've got a good study now. and. The difficulty is, of course, if you have any underlying medical condition, whether that's asthma, whether that's a cancer, whether your immune system is compromised, in those cases, you know, I think people should straight up be given N95 masks because they've been a little bit difficult to obtain. Now, not, they're not impossible to obtain. Plenty of people are getting them. I have them. It's, so it's clearly not impossible to get them. But for everybody else, honestly, I think you know, they should be completely given the freedom to choose whether they want to have a mask or not. And not only that, they should be encouraged not to wear a mask in order to promote herd immunity amongst healthy people. So that way, basically, we, you know, we develop an immunity, virus gets, you know, we get past this virus and we move on. It actually is protective in the long term. Yeah. Well, you say that and every medical doctor that we've been hearing from in the media in the last few months because remember in the beginning we were hearing masks don't help don't wear the masks then it was wear the masks and now all we're hearing is masks will help wear a mask and that's all that we hear nowadays so uh why come out with this now since we're going to get the vaccine and by next june the entire public from what we're now hearing we're all going to get uh we're going to be able to get the vaccine the general public so why come out with this now yeah i think it's because the study came out now right so whenever new data comes out you have to basically adjust and make determinations. The problem with this idea that everybody should be wearing a mask is that can go on perpetually. You know, every time a flu comes up, we can be doing this. And it's, at the end of the day, it's not very social. It's, it's scary for people. I don't think there's, it's gonna be good for children, for childhood development, for psychological development. Of course, we don't have any studies on that. That's a problem. That's a that's a problematic thing. When those studies start coming out, I imagine there's going to be psychological problems with childhood development. I don't know. I'd like to see those studies, but again, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a big safety hazard either for people that don't have underlying medical conditions. We've been hearing from those who work at Mayo, especially this week, and we have uh, plenty of people in ICU. We have plenty of people in the hospital. We've been hearing from medical personnel. It is a problem. They're saying that you wear your masks and it's going to help control the spread. Uh, therefore, what you're saying is wrong. Help me understand because I'm hearing a contradiction here. Sure, I don't think there's a contradiction. Okay. I feel like if I sat down with people and talked to them about their specific town or about this specific region, you know, my proposal to wear N95 masks if you've got underlying medical conditions or to not wear masks at all if you're perfectly healthy to increase herd immunity. I think people, I think people recognize that as reasonable as long as the hospitals aren't overrun. If they're overrun, it's a different discussion. And I don't know if Mayo is overrun or not. I'm not speaking for Mayo Clinic. But again, if they are overrun, you know, 
back when this lockdown first, you know, back when there was this whole idea of 15 days to flatten the curve and we had this whole lockdown, they shut down my research area at the Mayo Clinic and converted it to a COVID response unit. And we had like one case in Rochester, Minnesota for literally like the next month. Mm. So obviously situations like that, like overreactions like that have really tested everybody's patience. So this half hour, we're looking at herd immunity in regards to COVID-19. There are many unknowns about how this works. Researchers around the globe are looking into what extent transmission rates are reduced when more people are exposed to the virus. Now for part two of my conversation with Dr. Anthony Jay, who recently put out a video, who for the last three years has been a researcher at Mayo Clinic, who in my conversation with him is speaking completely independently from Mayo Clinic. This has become very political and mm -hmm. polarizing and uh, people sit on one side or the other. And I've been accused of uh, being very political because of this. And let me tell you, I'm not. I'm not sitting on one side or the other. I do what uh, I think is best. I advise my family based on data. And I want to know that, I want to know from you, because you're in the medical profession, where do you stand on this politically? Right. Well, I agree with you. I don't try and make it about politics. Yeah. I try and avoid the politics at all costs. <laughs> and that's why I like this, this proposal that I'm making. That's why I was bold enough to make it because I think it crosses political boundaries. I don't think I'm taking a stance on a Democrat side or a Republican side or anything like that. I think I'm just taking a stance on freedom and saying, here's the best of both worlds. I think everybody agrees N95 masks are the best. They've been saying that even before COVID came out. Mm -hmm. In fact, when COVID first came out, everybody's talking about how N95s are the only masks that work. And of course, there's some efficacy to other masks as well, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, uh, the biggest complaint and the biggest concern people have, I think, is the hospitals will be overrun, right? Right. And that's a legitimate concern. And I think we have to address that at a regional, specific and localized level. So rather than saying, well, we've got one case of COVID in the entire town of 100,000 people, or we've got one case of COVID in a town of 5,000 people, let's make an entire lockdown. I think that's ridiculous, but we've, we've gone through that. People are frustrated with that. It doesn't work. And so, you know, if the hospitals are indeed, in fact, being overrun and, or even overstressed, well, then there's a great case for those cities. And again, very specific, very localized, very regional to take actions, to start promoting masks for everybody, but to, put it out globally or even just within the nationally within the United States, I think is overkill. And people, you can only cry wolf so many times when people are crying wolf and telling everybody that the sky is falling, you know, eventually people are going to get frustrated. So we can't, we can't overreact and be overzealous with this stuff. And as you said, it's become a little bit political as well, which makes it even more problematic. This is interesting and I appreciate it. All I want to do is have intelligent and interesting conversations on all sides of the spectrum and that's what it is people don't have to agree we're just letting people make up their own minds and hear from different sides so i appreciate that dr j thank you